And she was like, who? And he was like, ah. And we was like, what? And she was like, who? And he was like, ah. And we was like, what? Black man, go, go. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Just Ask Joey. This is the only place on the internet where you will find a former idiot answering your questions to help you either avoid idiocy or get over your idiocy. Hopefully, it's a lot more of the avoiding than the getting over, but I'm here to help either way. Today's question is specifically geared towards people that have ADHD or you have a family member that has ADHD, um, but I think there is a lesson for everybody in this, and it's it's finding strength in your weaknesses or finding strength in your perceived weaknesses. I get a lot of questions about ADHD. Um, a lot of people are questioning whether they have it, whether they don't have it, what they should do. Should they take pills? Should they not take pills? What does it mean? Am I going to be screwed forever because they have ADHD? And I don't think no matter what you have, if you learn how to harness the good parts and block out the bad parts, you're going to be good in the end. You're going to be better in the end. And I think ADHD is one of those things where it is difficult if you're not willing to address the actual issues. Um, and if you don't look into it and if you don't believe it, and so there are some major downsides to it. I mean, I spent my entire uh, elementary school and middle school career sitting in the corner because I wouldn't shut the F up ever. I was constantly talking, making jokes, doing this, doing that. And... Uh, to deal with me, I just I sat I sat in the corner by the sink. So not that easy. Um, growing up, looking back on it, getting separated and stuff like that, and then having ADHD, your brain's kind of spinning all the time. So you just once you realize you have it, and you really kind of look at where you've been, you go, "Oh man, I should have noticed that a long time ago." But you know, being the age I am, late thirties, people weren't really looking into ADHD. I was just the hyper kid that wouldn't shut up. So go to the corner. And I'm actually kind of glad that I did grow up in the in the 80s and early 90s because I'd have been put on pills. And I don't think pills are the right answer. Um, I may be in the minority on that, but I think you can handle it naturally. And this is kind of, I'm going to end up talking about how to how to handle stuff towards the end of this. But the question of the day today specifically is, um, what what are the biggest issues or what's the biggest issue? With, with ADHD. And I think the biggest issue is um, structure. And I know that sounds crazy, but if you have ADHD, you are going to be structured. Now, the thing is, are you going to be good structured or are you going to be bad structured? Now, this is kind of like the, the using good versus using evil kind of powers. This is this is Thor versus Loki. This is Iron Man versus Whiplash. You know, it's good and bad. It's what what do you want to choose to do with it? You have powers. You have these these um I like to call them I like to call them superpowers, but since I have ADHD, I'm super biased on that. But there are elements of having ADHD that are fantastic, but you have to you have to control them. And to me, I think ADHD is either, is it's black and white. Either you're going to control it or it will control you. And the different ways that it can control you is through structure. And even though structure sounds like a good thing, it can be really bad. And I hope that is clear after we go through this. Um, so there's there's a different types of, of structure that I'm going to go through that I'm this is, I'm not pulling this out of a book. This is just what I think personally, the different types of structure that you can find yourself in with ADHD. And one is um, the structure of a relationship. Um, I know for myself and I know for friends that have ADHD, that whether they admit it or not, that relationships are a structure. And what you when you have ADHD, your brain is all over the place all the time. I am, that's why I was in, the, that's why I was by myself in the classroom because my brain was, they're talking over here and I'm kind of paying attention to this and then this is going on over here, but then I'm thinking about this and I'm over here and I'm all over the place. But so I, I like, I found myself in relationships and I find my friends in relationships really more as a structure thing than anything. They are almost worried about what 
happens if they're unleashed kind of on the world with no with no restrictions because if you're in a relationship you have to be home at a certain time you have to call at a certain time there's just there's certain kind of guidelines put in place and you you like to you like to have those restrictions you like to kind of be corralled because if you could just go anywhere talk to anybody do anything man like i think about me in my in my early 20s and when i was playing in my band uh starving millionaires like i was crazy enough as it is i can't imagine how crazy i would have been if it was just a free for all and i could kind of do do anything so you like to put yourself in a in a relationship to have that structure even though you may go off and be a total ass and act like you're not in a relationship and do all kinds of other crazy stuff, the relationship you feel in your head, and this is the structure, this is the one of the, the, the bad ways of the structure, is it, it kind of reins you in and, and you have to do certain things because you're in a relationship, even though you could still be off doing all this other crazy stuff. Um, another structure that I found myself in was school. And schools, there's nothing wrong with school. I mean, I went got my undergrad, got my graduate degree, you know, got my master's and everything. And it's, it's cool. But what I found myself doing is because I was so comfortable being in a structure and so comfortable kind of being guided that I never really thought about what I was doing for myself. And it's kind of the same thing with the relationship. I found myself kind of at the same time, uh, late teens, early twenties, being in a relationship and just, you know, you're just in a relationship and you just kind of go with the flow. You're in school and you just kind of go with the flow. But it's it's relationships are, in, are inherently good things and school is an inherently good thing. But I can vividly remember graduating from, uh, graduating from college and moving back home and not having any idea what the hell I was going to do. I had done everything I was supposed to do. I had done it in the time I was supposed to do it in. I mean, I was coming home, graduating from college at 22, graduating from a good school, Everything's cool, right? Except I never took the time to really think about what I was going to do. So what did I do? I ended up going to law school because I like putting myself back in structure. And then you're thinking, well, what am I doing this for? And it's like, it's not that it's too late to, to think about stuff like that, but, but you get yourself in a position where you haven't thought about it thoroughly because you're not really addressing who you are. You're just like, cool, I'm on a path. Just tell me where to go and what to do so I don't have to think about it because with my ADHD brain, I'm going to be all over the place. And it's, I don't think it's healthy. I had, a, I had a rough time, you know, dropped out of law school because I was going to be in a band and then the band stuff was too wide open for me. So I got myself into other jobs to have structure. And it's just, it's, it's, and I didn't, I didn't, this is nothing that I realized at the time. I didn't realize this until my early 30s. So like 10 years later, I'm realizing this stuff. So um, I would use relationships as a structure. I would use school as a structure. I would use kind of, if somebody would tell me what to do and I go, okay, I'll just get on this path and just go that way. It's like, um, like, uh, you're like when you have ADHD, you, you want structure, you want Google Maps. Just tell me where I'm going to go and I'll just go there so I don't have to think about it because it's too much for me to think about it. And you do that with relationships, with school and with jobs. You jump into a job, you don't like the job, you don't really like what you're studying in school, you don't really like the relationship you're in, but you don't even think, okay, well, I'm going to get out of this and try something else because out of that, out of that structure, it's like, who knows what's out there? And you don't even really want to know what's out there because you're, it's almost like you're afraid of yourself because you know that you could be, you could go all over the place. And without that structure, you feel really insecure. So you keep yourself in crappy relationships or maybe you have a major you don't really like or you're in school you're like and you do things you don't really know why you do them but you still do them and the thing that that the biggest issue with that is one you're not being true to yourself you'll probably be your level of happiness is going to be a a hell of a lot lower i give you like 50 percent less happiness if you're just on a path and the worst part about it is when you realize you're on that path when it hits you when you break up in that relationship or you graduate from school or you realize that this job is a freaking nightmare like it, when it hits you it hits you really hard because you never really thought about it up to that point you may think about it a little bit but when the reality of situations hits you when you have ADHD and you've had this structure in place the reality of situations hits you it's like getting punched by freaking Mike Tyson 
it is a it is jarring and you go i found myself in situations um multiple times unfortunately hence the former idiot part find myself in situations where i'm like how the hell did I do that? How how the hell did I like what am I do, like what am I doing? Like I've literally went to a psychologist and said the first thing, so why are you here? I go, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. It, like literally. And it literally I didn't have an idea for what I was doing because it was just like it's like a zombie. You're just you're on you got like tractor beams and you just go without even thinking about it. So that's one way that structure can be bad. And it seems healthy on its surface. So that's why I separated it from this next structure because this next structure is bad too, but it's it's really more, it's like really bad. So so structure one is putting yourselves in like relationships, in school and in jobs and just putting yourself on a path that's inherently a healthy path, but you're doing it in an unhealthy way because you're doing it without any thought. You're doing it basically just to be on a path. So I call that um, uh, social structure. That's so... Type one of, of your your um, your structured ADHD life is social structure, which is inherently good, but not good for you because you're not necessarily uh, being true to yourself. The other type of um, control is is I'm just going to call it outside control, and this is having to do with uh, two types: medication or self medication, is really more likely self medication and punishment. So there's two types here. Self-medication, um, you just want your brain to chill the F out. I have, I know there's people in my life that that they have, you know, drinking problems and drug problems and what they want to do is just slow their brain the hell down. Like they're, they're maybe they're in relationships, maybe they're in, um, they have jobs and they have, you know, whatever, maybe they don't have jobs, but they just want their brain to slow the hell down. And how do you do that? You drink, you smoke, you, you know, meth, pills, heroin, you just, you do what you do to slow your brain down and the structure you put yourself in is, is avoiding. So you're avoiding the same way you were with those social structures, but you're doing it in an inherently bad way, but it's still the same thing. You're just, you're handing over control here, heroin, please just freaking take this. I don't want it anymore. Take this alcohol please i don't even want to think about it anymore just freaking take it job uh i don't i don't care just take it it's 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 giving yourself the excuse to not deal with yourself and if people knew how green the grass was on the other side they wouldn't do this to themselves they would allow themselves the time to come in and and learn about themselves because adhd is freaking awesome you have to manage it, but it is freaking awesome. And the other negative um, structure that people put themselves in is punishment. And by punishment, I mean jail and prison. There are, there were a lot of people that you knew, like when I was at San Quentin and I was in Soledad, there were a lot of people that you knew they were cool being there. And they were just jack offs. It's just idiots. Like the they're they're the guys that that they came up with a three strikes rule for. They're just they're idiots. But then there were other guys that liked being there because they didn't like themselves on the outside. They wouldn't want to get out. There were guys that were up for for um up for parole that weren't even going to go to the meeting because they didn't want to be outside. They were happy with the structure. They were happy. It's almost because when you're in prison, you're, I mean, Jesus, you, you don't have, you have pretty much no control over anything except for like when you pee and poo and you have to do that right next to somebody in your little cell. So even that's not that much freedom, but having this, like having the structure feels good because they don't like themselves on the outside. They don't like themselves with freedom. With freedom, they make bad choices. With freedom, they get themselves into crappy situations. So they're cool with messing up on the outside and getting sent to prison for two, three, four, five, fifteen years, because it's not, it's it's giving the control to somebody else. And this is all about this is all about structure, right? This is there. There's there's it's handing the the structure over to somebody else instead of creating the structure for yourself. So the um, the outside control, self medication and punishment and neither one of those are good for anybody so you either find yourself in the marriage marriage relationship school job 
societal structure. You find yourself in the uh, self-medication structure. You find yourself in the punishment structure. Instead, the structure that that I've been able to to put myself into, and granted, this is until I was 32. I was in the school structure. Then I was in the relationship structure. Then I was in the work structure. Then I was, you know, kind of dabbled in the um, self-medication structure and then found myself in the punishment structure. Not that I was happy with the punishment structure, but that's, I was there and it was structured. So I'm saying that. Um, so the, the third type of structure is the total ownership structure. This is the, I have ADHD. I, my brain goes a million miles an hour. Um, I want it to be calmed down. I want to be effective. I want to be happy. I want to be efficient. So I'm going to take total ownership of what I have. And you can call it a weakness, but once you start learning about that weakness, I guarantee you, if you have ADHD, I guarantee you when you start learning how to like utilize that power, you're going to be an effing beast at whatever you do because you're going to pick the right path because you're going to listen to yourself and you're going to love what you do and you're going to freaking just you're going to kill it and it's going to be awesome. It takes time, but it's going to be awesome. So this is the total ownership. I have ADHD. There are weaknesses in ADHD. I can be a total pain in the ass and I can be totally awesome in other situations. So I get myself to be less of a pain in the ass and I get myself to be more awesome and I can utilize this power. The only way you're going to be able to do that is with knowledge. The only way you're going to be able to do that is with learning about ADHD learning about how the how the brain works, how your brain works, how what your personality type is and taking that and and utilizing it. Um, I've learned a ton the last four and a half five years about ADHD and I've been able to apply a ton of it and it has been awesome. I will admit I am highly structured. If you had told me 10 years ago, hey, you know what? What you need is structure. I would have laughed in your freaking face because that as a person with ADHD, with my brain just going 99% of the time, it is structure, saying you need structure, saying you need discipline sounds like the worst thing in the world. But what's funny is the people that have the ADHD the most, the people that are most sporadic, most all over the place, they're the ones that need structure more than anybody because what happens is you harness what you're doing is you're harnessing that sporadicness. You're harnessing all that energy and you're being able to direct, direct it at something instead of it just going everywhere. So it's kind of like, think of it like, um, think of it like a controlled burn. Think of it like um, uh, wind power. Like if you're, from, if you're from Northern California or you ever drive through those areas where they have the huge um, turbines that are using the wind for energy, it's like that. Wind by itself, wind can be a hurricane. Wind can tear your house down. Wind can can uh, can rip your life apart, can toss cars across the street. Or you can harness the wind and you can use it for energy. So it's your choice. But you can either be just blowing all over the place or you can harness it and use it for good. Um, so I harness the hell out of my energy. I have a, my structure is I get up the same day, same time, almost every single day. My first half hour, hour looks the same almost every single day. The days I run, I run those every week. The days I work out, I do that every week. I eat. It's very similar stuff all the time and it sounds boring. And from the outside, I think it's boring. I'm, I think I'm the most boring person I know. Um, but man, the amount of stuff that you can get done and the amount of things that you can do are so awesome. Once you get your life structured and once you start eating right and working out and helping your brain function the way you want it to and setting up the structures, it's, it's unbelievable and it feels, it feels awesome. So I'm going to give you a couple resources for you to start learning and then seriously, find me on um, either comment me back on the, at the bottom of this at the, in the, the show notes comment me here, find me on Snapchat, find me on Twitter, find me on whatever, and ask questions. I have, I have a ton of information. I don't want to go way, way deep into this. I want you to, I, I want you to want 
to learn about yourself. I want you to want to learn about ADHD. I want you to want to learn how to kind of harness it because I can give you a starting point and I can tell you about me, but it's still, it's your story. It's, it's what you have to do for yourself and you knowing yourself. So I'm going to give you a couple of resources. I'm going to give you three books that I think will set you, set you up perfectly, not only with knowledge, but kind of with mindset also. And then I'm going to give you a couple articles that I want you, that I want you to read. So the first book is called, uh, Driven to Distraction. It is by Edward Hallowell and John Brady, John Rattay. Sorry, dude, if I'm saying that wrong. And I'm going to have all these links in the show notes, but Driven to Distraction, number one. Number two, it's called Spark. It is by John Rattay, Brady, dude, I'm really sorry. And Eric uh, Hagerman, Spark. It's about how the brain works and how, um, how working out and getting blood flow and certain heart rates and stuff can actually enhance your brain activity. And for somebody with ADHD, this is exactly what you need. And then the, the third book is called Unlimited Power by Tony Robbins. Fantastic book. Gives you some uh, exercises on how to kind of block out the bad and harness the good stuff, which is another thing with ADHD. When you hyper-focus on stuff, you're hyper-focusing on, I mean, it's locked in. So if it's bad stuff, you have to learn how to block it out. And if it's good stuff, you have to learn how to harness it. Unlimited Power by Tony Robbins has a lot of great, great stuff in that that, w- that will help you kind of lock that in. Um, and the two articles, one is called Writing is My Ritalin, like riding, like riding a bike is my Ritalin by Bruce Barcott. This was pivotal in my understanding about ADHD and how this individual used um, cycling to um, to kind of get his brain going because what happens is and I'm just give you spoiler alert is when you work out when you do uh, endurance training and I'm a cyclist and a runner when you do endurance training it kind of what it does to your body chemically is it does similar things in your brain that Ritalin would do which is why duh it's called riding is my Ritalin because you can kind of unlock those things naturally and which is which is what I chose to do the less the less crap I put into my system you know the better in the long run. So Writing is My Ritalin by Bruce Barcott and then The Nine Environments of You by Jim Bunch. And this is, um, this was big for me because I wanted to create a space in my house where it's, I sit down and it's just boom. And this is, I know you can't see it, but this is my space. This is my guitar room and my computer room and my everything room. So I come in here and it's just, this is, this is my environment. This is, this is how, this is the place that I can, I can create. And then what you realize is you create your environments. Your environments don't create you. So you either control, it's the same thing with ADHD. You either control the environments you in or the environments, environments will control you. And, and if you put yourself into an environment where you feel comfortable, you're going to produce a heck of a lot better, a heck of a lot, heck of a lot more stuff and better stuff than than you would if you are uncomfortable or in a crappy situation. And I want you to think about if you think you have ADHD or your kid has ADHD or whatever your concerns are, whatever's bringing you to this this podcast and this vlog, I want you to think about um, ADHD is kind of obvious, like when you see it with somebody. And I want you to think that there's a ton of greatness out there with ADHD. As much crap as there is with ADHD, there's a lot of goodness too. You think about guys like like Casey Neistat. Think about guys like Gary Vanderchuk, Tim Ferriss, um, Brian Koppelman. Like think about, there's a lot of really, really great things going on out there. And I promise you, these dudes have ADHD because I don't know people that, if, if your brain's going all the time and you harness it, you do great things like Casey Neistat. You do great things like Gary Vaynerchuk, Tim Ferriss, Brian Koppelman, Tony Robbins, Rick Rubin. I mean, the list goes on and on. James Altucher. ADHD is a really freaking powerful thing. And there's a lot of greatness out there and there's a lot of BS out there. There's more people in prison with ADHD. The prison population of ADHD is like 50, 60%. That's a really high number. Those are people that are obviously not harnessing it very well. They're harnessing it with the punishment or or the um, self medication, so it's gonna be whatever you make it. But it can be freaking awesome. But you have to learn, 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 
and it can be awesome. So ADHD is a fire, it's water, it's wind, and it can either be a controlled burn or it can be an inferno. It can either be a flood or it can be hydroelectric power. It can be, it can be a hurricane or you can harness it with the turbines and you can power your, yourself, power your city. So you're either going to get burned or you're going to control it. You're either going to drown or you're going to control it. Or you're either going to blow away or you're going to control it. But the decision is up to you. If you have any questions about this and any other questions, please hit me up on Snapchat, hit me up on Twitter, DM me your questions, and I'll be happy to, to, uh, to answer them here. Hope you guys have a good week. I'll see you next time. And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Black ass Joey.